So Python 3 is now the version of Python that everybody should be moving to because as, as was stated at PyCon, um, basically there's not going to be a Python version 2.8 and all the development is going to be moved towards 3. Now some people may have been reluctant to move to 3 because the libraries that they needed used only Python 2, so I know that Google App Engine is still only on, Py is still only on Python 2.7. However, Maybe you want to play around with three, and you don't want to risk messing up your local your local machine. Well, here's a way that you can get around that. There's a service out there called Cloud9 at c9.io, and Cloud9 recently had an update in which of their um, service that they give you is actually a Linux is actually an Ubuntu Linux machine is a VM, and you actually have sudo access to it. So what you can do is you can go to c9.io and sign up with either your GitHub or Bitbucket account and then you'll be brought to this screen here, this dashboard. So what you're going to want to do is once you're here, you're going to click on create new workspace and then what you're going to want to do is you want to create, you want to click custom and I'll just, I don't know, snakes and then click create. This should take only a few seconds and after it's done you'll see now we can click on snakes and start editing. And it's going to bring up an editor, it's going to bring up a terminal window, it's going to bring up a little file project manager type thing here. And you'll see what this is. This is actually running an Ubuntu VM. It's uh, running on Google Compute Engine and we have, like I said, we have sudo access and everything. But uh, now one thing to keep in mind is that first of all, this workspace is public. So anything that you run, out, so you can run web applications from here. So any kind of web application that you run will be a public URL. Uh, number two is that the resources are limited. Uh, you can do quite a bit with this, but there are some things, I'll talk about one here in a minute, that you cannot do. But what I'm going to do first of all is uh, I want to get Python 3 on here. Now Python version 2 is already on here, 276. But I want Python 3 and the easiest way that I found to do that is to use this installer called Miniconda. Now this is done uh, from by a company called Continuum Analytics uh, who's, a, who's big in the Python space. Now they also have a regular, they also have a larger package it's kind of an all-in-one installer called Anaconda, and it's got like 195 or something open source packages that's included with it. The problem is the install is too big for the free instances of Cloud9. So I'm going to start with Miniconda, which just gives you the bare, which gives you just the bare bones installer with Python 3, and then you can later on uh, install the packages that you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the link ad address for the 64-bit. Uh, installer for Linux and Python 3 and then I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to download this. Sometimes this is a little laggy. And that won't take very long because remember we're using Cloud9's bandwidth to do this. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the mode to make it executable and then I'll run it. and I'll accept the license agreement. I'll press space to get through all this and then I'll tell it that I approve and it's going to ask me where do I want to install it and this will be fine and it'll do the install. So we're going to get Python 341 and some other stuff. Okay, what this is asking, and this is saying, do you want to do you want to add this to your path? Basically, do you want to make this your default version of Python? I'm going to tell it yes. Okay, great. So now notice down here it says for this change to become active, you have to open a new terminal. So I'll close this one. And I will open up a new one. Alright, so now if I 
ask it for Python, it'll say I have 341 from Continuum Analytics. All right, but what I want to do is I actually want to create an environment, a sandboxed instance of this. So what I'm going to do is one of the things that was installed was a command called conda. So I'm going to run conda create dash n. This is for name and I'm just going to call this pi3. And then I'm going to tell it the version of Python I want to use is equal to 3 and then I want it to also install IPython for me. And it says it's going to install, it says it's going to download IPython and then it's going to install all of this in the environment for me. And this will take just a few seconds. All right. So now it says to activate this account, I have to run source activate pi3. So I'll do that. And it helps if I type it correctly. So now what it's done is it's modified my path to put the binary, the Python binaries from the environment as opposed to the as opposed to the default ones. So now what I can do is I want to install pip, the package manager. So I'll do that using conda. Conda install pip. And it'll tell me what it's going to install. I'll tell it yes, I want to go ahead and do that. So it'll pull the packages down and link them in. Now, if I type pip freeze, you'll see that all I've got here is IPython, which is what's in this, which is what's um, in this environment here. So what I want to get, so what I want to do now is, even though I've got IPython, it's not necessarily the text-based version of IPython is not the most convenient interface to use. I like to use IP, I like to use IPython Notebook. So what I'll do is I'll tell Conda to install IPython Notebook. And it'll pull that down. And it's also going to have to install 0MQ Tornado and some other things as well. And this will take just a second or two to finish. Okay, great. Now what I can do is I can simply type IPython Notebook. And then what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to tell it the IP that I want it to listen on. So double dash IP equals 0 .0 0.0.0.0 .0 means listen on any IP. And then we're also going to need to specify a port, which we're going to specify to 8080. That's the one that Cloud9 opens up for us. And then I'm going to tell it no browser because otherwise it will try to open up the default browser, which in this case will be a text-based browser. Um, once the once the notebook is loaded. Now the IP by default is localhost and the port by default is 8888 I believe. So this command here is what we would use is what we can use for cloud9. And you can see that it has that it started is running on this address and we would press control C twice to stop to stop the um, to stop the server. Now how do we get to this? So what we would do is we need to open up a new tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the address for this instance. Now the address for the instance always follows the form instance name dash c9 dash username dot c9 dot io. So in this case, our instance is called snakes. So it would be snakes dash c9 dash the user my username here is binary chef spelled it a little bit differently than you might expect and then dot c9 dot io hit enter and you will see the ipython notebook homepage come up we can create a new notebook now like i said everything here is public so be careful what you put in these but at any rate i could import os and say for file name in os dot list directory the current directory uh, print and we're using python 3 so we have to have the parentheses print file name and you'll see here why we would 
why we would want to, you know, so if we had something confidential in readme.md, somebody could just say more uh, readme.md and and see and see and see what's in there. So, like I said, this is public, so you need to be careful. Now, something that I like to do, this is not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something that's a good idea, possibly, is, so I'm going to quit this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to uh, the, little, the little gear here, and I'm going to tell it to show home in favorites, and that's going to, and that's going to show me my, my home directory, which has all my configuration files, and I'm going to go into bash aliases, and I'm going to take this command and copy it. And what I'm going to do is add an alias here. Oops, I need to add the name of the alias. And now when I restart my terminal, instead of having to type all of this out, I can simply type IPYNB and Oh, whoops, sorry. What I have to do is first I have to source activate Pi3. There we go. And now I can say IPYNB. There we go. And we have our, and we have our notebook back. So I hope you'll check this out. You can do other things with Cloud9 as well. Uh, it's a it, for, for node you actually have an integrated debugger but you can uh, you can install pretty much anything that you uh, can on a Linux uh, on a Linux instance I've gotten Scala on there I've had mono on there uh, all kinds of things uh, there's a MongoDB is uh, running on there already so there's a lot that you can do with this uh, but like I said this is a good way to get started with Python 3 if you just want to uh, experiment with it thanks for watching